Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the village idiot and a mom with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Now then, I've got a new district starting today. Let's have a look at some of the houses in this place. Looks quite nice. I have been here before, so I do know what to expect. In fact, this is a district that I've spent a lot of my younger years in, uh, and I'm so excited to finally start it. Welcome to North Lincolnshire. This is Oston Ferry. Oston Ferry is the first village and civil parish we've touched in North Lincolnshire. Despite that, it has a Doncaster postcode, one of five parishes which do so in North Lincolnshire, the others being Epworth, Haxey, Belton and Root. It's situated on the west bank of the River Trent and nine miles north of Gainsborough, although there are no direct roads from Oston Ferry across the Trent to the town. The clue though as to how transportation over the Trent used to occur is in the name, a ferry used to operate over the river. Oston Ferry had a total resident population of 1,128 in 2001, which included the small hamlet of Kelfield to the north and the hamlet of Gunthorpe to the south. This increased to 1,328 at the 2011 census. Sometimes the village is referred to as just Oston or indeed just Ferry. The village forms part of the Isle of Axome. The name is given to the area as once this was an island, prior to the area being drained by the Dutchman Cornelius Vermoyden. It used to be an area of dry raised ground in the surrounding marshland, and Axome literally means island by Haxey. West Butterwick, which is the next parish to the north, was originally part of the township of Oston. So Oston Ferry is a place that I know fairly well from a previous job in fact. I used to come out here uh, occasionally and it's a nice circular walk. It's generally speaking uh, a circular village, what I call a circular village, although it does have a couple of bits to the north and to the south along the banks of the River Trent which we'll catch in the car. Oston Ferry stands on relatively flat ground by the Trent. The closest motorway is the M180 and Robin Hood Airport is 10 miles to the west within South Yorkshire. The parish includes the village of Oston Ferry and some smaller places which include of course Kelfield, Gunthorpe and Hecdyke and Melwood. The name Oston is thought to derive from the Old Norse Ost and Tun meaning East Farmstead a view shared by other sources which outline it specifically implied the farmstead east of Haxey. The name Oston is also shared by at least two other settlements within the United Kingdom, one of which we've already seen, Oston in Doncaster. In the 1086 Doomsday Book, it's listed as Oston. This place is full of history. You may have noticed on the village sign it used to be a port. It also had a castle at one point known as Kinnaird's Ferry Castle. It was a Mott and Bailey fortification from the 12th century. It lay on the site of an earlier Roman castrum. It was dismantled by order of Henry II in 1175 following the revolt of 1173 to 1174. As part of the provisions of the Local Government Act 1972, Oston Ferry formed part of the Booth Ferry District of the County of Humberside, having previously lain within the parts of Lindsay from the historic county boundaries of Lincolnshire. Since 1996, however, Oston Ferry has formed part of the Unitary Authority area of North Lincolnshire. In 2009, a specific area of land in Oston Ferry was highlighted in a study by W.S. Atkins for the Department of Energy as a potential site for a nuclear power plant. Although the site nominally met the site assessment criteria for such, it was eventually deemed not to be a credible site for deployment. Industry-wise though, in 1885 the village had a rope walk, a boat building yard, several corn mills and was known for the manufacture of sacking and sailcloth. Back then the parish was formed of 5,350 acres, wheat, barley, potatoes, beans and grass, 
we're all grown here. These days it covers 18.94 square kilometres and has a population density of 71.97. The average house price in the village comes in at £245,000. 98.8% of the population is of white British ethnicity. Notable people from the village include Philippa Foote, philosopher and inventor of the branch of ethics known as trolleyology, who was born on October the 3rd, 1920, and died in October 2010 in Oxford, aged 90. Epworth-born Alexander Killam, founder of the Methodist New Connection, worked in Oston Ferry during his teens. Oston Ferry Grade 1 listed Anglican Parish Church is dedicated to St Martin. The church register dates from 1603. The building partly dates from the end of the 12th century and was rebuilt in 1844. It can seat 600 people. It's an attractive building surrounded by the old graveyard and still has the pre-Reformation stone altar in the South Chapel. Interestingly, the church is set back from the road and is reached by walking under a large stone archway which we'll see shortly. I deemed it to belong with the interesting features, which by the way, Oston Ferry has plenty of. A previous church was built here in the inner bailey of the former castle. Both the castle and that church were built of wood, and nothing remains of them, although the motte can be glimpsed through the trees to the south of the present church. St Martin's is not the only religious building in the village. The Wesleyan Methodist Chapel was built in 1837. There was also a primitive Methodist Chapel here too, but that's now closed. Oston Ferry contains one primary school, that's St Martin's Church of England Primary School. As far as bus services go, Oston Ferry is served by four in total, although one is a school service. The main service buses here are the 398 and 399. Now, speaking of buses, Oston Ferry, of course, is on the Isle of Axome, and the Isle has its own bus service, Isle Coaches, which are based just here. There you go. The village has a few small shops. King Edward also granted a market charter and annual fare to the place in the 14th century. In terms of pubs, there are two main ones. This is the first and perhaps the most important, the White Hart. This is where the ferry landing once was. According to Watt Pub, the other pub here, the Crooked Billet, is a cosy community pub popular with the locals. It has a large bar with a real fire and soft furnishings. It also functions as a restaurant and opening hours vary on Saturdays for special events. The park here is pretty extensive. This is Oston Ferry Wreck. It has a small playground and a football pitch or two. The village even has a small set of public conveniences on the edge of the park. The village hall is this ornate looking building and it's officially known as the Oston Ferry Coronation Hall. This building here is the Oston Ferry Surgery, which is part of the South Axome Practice Group of Surgeries. We'll be seeing some more of these around the Isle of Axome. Officially known as the St Martin's Church Gateway, here is the arch you have to walk under to access the church. It's been recently restored and this magnificent structure is unsurprisingly listed. It reminded me of a similar archway we've seen before in Rampton. As well as the main church and churchyard, there's a cemetery along Epworth Road, with an interesting building in the middle of it. So as well as the main church here, you've also got this, which is a little chapel inside the cemetery. It says above the door, Burial Board 1881. And it's got a bell in the tower up there. There you go. Nice and quaint, isn't it? Oston Ferry Smithy Heritage Centre and Village Museum is certainly one building that's worth a visit. It has photos and old farm and boating tools, as well as a working smithy and relics that locals have found in their lofts. Also here are copies of the indexes for the parish for visitors to consult.
On the edge of Oston Ferry Wreck is the War Memorial which looked pretty magnificent in the early morning sunshine. A Miss Frances Sanders had almshouses here built in 1860 for six poor women. Her name appears on this clock tower in the marketplace. This was gifted by her in 1866 and is one of Oston Ferry's most recognisable features. Oston Ferry has a lot of properties which have changed their use over the years. That one behind me there, that brick building, that says the old filling station on it. And here, this is Mariner's House. Now, I don't know whether this is an old pub, but it certainly looks like it could have been. This building was Oston Church School. Over the right-hand entrance, it says Boys School, suggesting there was maybe a girls' school somewhere nearby too. It's now been converted into a private dwelling. Now to the river. Oston was originally two settlements. Oston was based around the higher ground to the west of the Trent where the church is and West Kennards Ferry was on the riverbank. So here we are again then on the banks of the River Trent and over the river you can see some houses. They belong to East Ferry and that's a parish of West Lindsay which we'll touch when we uh, start going around the north of Gainsborough eventually. Okay, now then, uh, this looks like a footpath down here, down the side of the White Hart. I don't know whether it is, but I'm going to attempt to traverse it and see what happens. The ferry that once crossed the river finished working in the 1940s, and there is now nothing to see of the ferry landing next to the White Hart public house. One thing you will notice here is the flood wall. The River Trent's levels are constantly monitored here to deal with potential flooding. 19th century houses here were designed to cope with flood water from the river. The front doors would open into a parlour and there were steps down into the kitchen and sculleries. If both the front door and the back door were opened, flood water was designed to rush through the houses. The Isle of Axome used to flood regularly and a series of pumping stations were built along the banks of the Trent in the 19th century to improve drainage. One of these was built on South Street in 1910 to do just that here in Oston Ferry. This was similar to other pumping stations along the Trent being powered with two boilers, steam engines and pumps. The building was extended in 1964 for a modern oil engine. It became redundant a few years ago and was leased to the Oston Ferry Pumping Engine Preservation Society. Okay, we're just about done with the main walk around Oston Ferry. Uh, there's one more thing to show you, and that's an elongated settlement to the south called Gunthorpe, which I will use the uh, dashboard for. I'll put the camera on the dashboard and drive through it. Easiest way to do it, I'm afraid. Uh, and uh, of course, there are some other things within the parish boundaries as well, because it's quite a, a large chunk of North Lincolnshire. And that's what the picture bit's for. That's coming your way in a second, right after I make use of the local conveniences.
And there you have it, that's the parish of Oston Ferry, including Gunthorpe, which I've just driven through. It's along the banks of the Trent. You can even see the uh, the wall over there where the uh, the flood wall continues south towards West Stockwith and towards the district of Bassett Law, because this is where it borders it up here. And uh, Oston Ferry is the kind of village which I particularly like. It's got a population of just over a thousand people and it's got you know pretty much everything you need in a little village really. Pubs and uh, a sports club and churches and things like that and it's, it's got some history to it as well. It's, it's got some, some substance as I like to call it and uh, yeah that's the first one down in North Lincolnshire and there are 57 parishes in North Lincolnshire there's, so there's only 56 to go. It shouldn't take me too long in fact. I've done bigger districts than this of course. Time to move on to my next one which is is a little bit smaller and for now this has been the parish of Oston Ferry and I've been Andy also known as the village idiot and I'm out <laughs>